Hey guys, today I want to show you some word problems about money and percentage increase and decrease. All right, so this is regarding the poll question that I posted on Schoology, but first of all, I want to introduce you to two word problems before it, just so we can feel comfortable doing one example of increasing and one example of decreasing, okay? So number one, student A, student A missed 20% of the questions on a test out of 60 points. What was the student score? So I'm going to call that student score because the name is A. I'm going to say A for student A. Okay. So I want you to think. Um, <clears throat> what's 100% of the test score? 100% of the test score is represented by 60, right? All right. But how much of the 100% did we miss? 20%. So if we miss 20% out of 100, how much remains? 80%. So what we're going to do to rewrite this in a more simple way, we're going to say our original amount got multiplied by what percentage remains? 80% we can represent as 0.80. All right, and really this is, let's expand it so you can see a nicer. I want you to think of that 100%. 100, if 80% is 0.8 or 0 0.80, what's 100% represented by? By 1.0 or one. And then what did we do to that 100%? We, we remove how much of that percentage? 20. 100 minus 20% is the same as that, all right? So that, there we go. The student score is 48. Use your calculator on that test score for 60% score 48. All right, next one, which this is what our, most of our problems are going to look like today. I'm talking about and regarding money. Your parents increased your original amount of $70. At the beginning of the day, you had $70, and they're going to increase it by 10%. What is your new total? Again, I want you to think like the previous problem. Let's write A for amount. And your beginning amount was seventy dollars all right so i want you to think like before if we st if you started with 70 i'm going to ask you what's a hundred percent of your total amount it must be 70 and what's happening to that to that a hundred percent is it increasing or decreasing it's increasing by ten percent so if we have a hundred percent and ten more percent that's going to be the same as one plus remember this is a hundred percent and then we're going to represent 10% that way, <clears throat> which becomes 70 times 1.10. All right. This, man, this means an increase of 10%. This means a decrease of 20%. <clears throat> so your new amount at the end of the day is $77. Cool. All right. So here's the poll question. And I don't know. I was pretty shocked at the results. You guys can check them out on Schoology. I don't have them in front of me. But most people... Uh, think that either three payments is the best option or it doesn't matter it, it still accumulates to 30 percent so it's going to be the same amount well let's explore this a little more i think the same as the previous problems all right so <clears throat> we started with a hundred dollars remember here it is initial amount is 100 dollars and we're increasing by 30 percent like in the previous problem we can say a is 100 Increase by 30%. Remember, it's the same as 1 plus 0.30, which turns into 1.30. And that amount is going to be 100 times 1.3 is $130. That's how much you would get in one payment. If you just got your uh, payment, int interest payment in one shot. All right, next option is... What if you take that 30% and you split it into two payments of 15%, all right? So because we're going to do two payments, I'm going to say amount number one. Okay, how would we compute 15% of 100? Just like before, we're going to say 100 times uh, 1 plus 0.15. But how did we get that 0.15? You know, how do we get this 0.15? What did we, what was the original percentage? It was 30%. So let's say 0.30. What did we do to 0.30 to get 15%? We divide it into two payments, all right? Okay, there it is. So that amount is equal to, put in your calculator, enter this, we get $115. 115. Now we got to take this amount and obtain 15% of this, okay? So let's do second amount. It's going to be 100. Remember, this is another way of representing. This is 115. 115 is represented this way. What would we have to multiply that by? We have to multiply by 
15% again. So again, I'm going to write 15% this way. All right. And notice that this expression is the same as that expression. Therefore, we can write it as 100 times 1 plus 15%. Remember, this is just 15% squared two times. All right. And there's our second amount. That is, that is, this is what we would obtain if we got two payments of 15%. So that amount would be, using your calculator, we'll get $132.25. So as you can see, just, just <clears throat> splitting that number of payments into two increases our, our final amount by $2.25 since we are also accumulating interest on our previous interest. Okay. And this idea you may know what it's called. I'm going to tell you the name soon. And let's just explore the last option. I think you can see where it's going from here. And I'm just going to represent it in a much quicker way. The first, because we're getting three payments here, I'm going to call it A sub 1 as the first payment out of three. Okay? So initial amount is $100 as before. We want 100% back plus, now remember it's 30%. Now it's divided into, into three payments. This is the same as... Uh, $110. That's what we would obtain after the first payment. The second one would be take this 110. Remember that this is 110, and but just like the previous problem, we're going to multiply it by this quantity again, so it just becomes a square. And when we calculate this, this now becomes $121. Look, the previous payment had two this one has three. Now we have to collect interest on that 110 and the 121. And look at how nice these patterns turn out to come. One plus 10% we obtain by 30% divided by three. But remember, this implies we would have to multiply by this quantity three times. This one implies we multiply by that quantity two times. This one implies we multiply it by it one time. Okay, the exponent corresponds to the number of, of compounded payments. All right, and, and again, in, using the calculator, we obtain that this is 100, oh, let me write it down here, running out of space. This is $133.10. Okay, next I'm going to show you a very quick example of another type of this idea is called compound interest, so let's write number 3.5. I meant to write this somewhere in the page, but I didn't know where, so let's call this compound interest. That's the name of this concept. You might have heard it in algebra too. <clears throat> so compounding the interest means that you're building interest on your interest so many number of times. So let's say that this one, let's say we had... I'm going to say P for principal. Principal is normally what we begin with. In the previous case, it was the 100. So let's suppose that our initial amount for this one really quick was $500. And we want a compound interest rate at, I'm going to use R for rate. Let's say that we wanted it at 12% rate. And oh, actually, that's not a good number for the example I'm going to use right now. Let's say 15% monthly. You want to compound interest monthly. Monthly means how many times are you going to repeat this process? N equals 12. All right. So normally for these compound interest problems, I'm going to give you some information such as this. A principal, a rate, and how many number of compound payments. All right. So I want you to go straight to the amount. The amount is going to be, our initial is 500. Just like repeat the pattern that we did in the last two problems. And we're multiplying by... 100% plus 15%, but be careful, 15% now got divided into how many payments? Remember that it was 12. And remember that that usually corresponds, the number of payments corresponds to the number of times you're multiplying by. Number of payments corresponds to the number of times you're multiplying that expression by. So because this is 12, we multiply that expression by that 12 times. And this is what you would enter in your calculator. I actually did not input it into mine. So you go ahead and do that now. And uh, I'm going to skip that part. Okay. 
<clears throat> I just wanted to show you that really quickly so you can see that you can do it for any percentages. It could be for 20%, for 45%, for any number of times. Which uh, leads me to my the main point of my lesson is, all right, so what would happen if the you, you look at the most simple case? We have one, $1, suppose that's our principal. We're going to go to the bank and take that $1, and this bank is very generous. They offer us a 100% rate, okay? So this is our P, value of P. This is R. And N number of payments. Think of that like we're going to compound interest N number of times. All right. So let's explore some options. Let's suppose that we just get it, uh, the N, the number of payments is one. So we just get to get this yearly. Think of it on a yearly basis. That's how banks will usually operate. So I will write yearly. <coughs> and organize the work here, okay? Yearly implies n equals 1. n equals 1. So we're going to write our formula as a for amount. Our, our equation is, remember, our principal is 1. We want to get 100% of our money plus another 100% divided by 1 time. This looks kind of weird, and I'm going to use that exponent of 1 also. <coughs> All these 1s... Are definitely the same number but they don't represent the same thing this one represents our principal this one represents a hundred percent that we're getting back this represents a hundred percent uh the a new a hundred percent and these two mean the number of compounded payments okay using the calculator this bank after one year will give us two dollars double our amount in one year excellent <coughs> excellent deal so then they say all right would you like to try out our semi-annually, the semi-annual option? Semi, think of it like half. So that would mean that every six months, we would get a return. And that means n equals 2 for the year. So here we're going to say $1 plus 100% back plus 100% now got divided by 2. But remember, we're multiplying by this quantity twice. And using the calculator, we get that uh, compounding the payments twice gives us $2.25. Okay, next after semi-annual, let's analyze quarterly. Quarterly means we're dividing by 4, so n equals 4. Every three months, we would get a return. So then we would make these calculations. A equals $1 our principal. We want the 100% plus 100% now divided by 4. And then that means we multiply by this expression four times. Again, calculating this gives us now $2. And I get some long decimal, but I'm going to use quite a few of those numbers right now. 4, 4, 4, 4, 1. Four zero. Dot dot dot. Okay. <coughs> That's for quarterly. Let's see at monthly. What is going on? Monthly is like the previous problem we saw, and and that implies n equals twelve. That problem on three point five. So we're gonna start again with our calculations: one dollar times a hundred percent plus a hundred percent divided into twelve, and we multiply by that factor twelve times. And this would bring our, our new amount to about 2.61, 3A3, dot, dot, or whatever, <clears throat> 303, I'm sorry. And as you can see here, the more number, the, the higher the number of times that we compound our payments, the amount seems to be increasing. The, the question is, how far can we take this, or... Can we just keep, can this number just keep increasing forever? I don't know. Let's try out bigger numbers to really, really decide that. So instead of that, let's see, what if we do a daily? Daily compound in interest means that we get a payment how many times a year? 365. So daily means that N is 365. And again, we can calculate that. One, 
is the, uh, the dollar plus 100% plus 100, new 100% divided by 365. And we're multiplying by this factor 365 times. And man, let's see what that happens. What happens to that amount? It does increase by another 10 cents, 2.71. Four, five, six, seven, dot, dot, dot. And okay, it seems like it's a little promising, but it took quite a, a big jump from n equals 12 to n equals 365 just to increase 10, 10 cents when before. Look how fast it was increasing. You know, it seems to be slowing down. So let's see. <clears throat> what would be better than daily? Imagine if you can get it every minute of the year. Every minute. I'm going to skip the calculations because I did, I did them earlier. Every minute means that n equals, um, let's see, I wrote it somewhere here. Let me look at my notes. n equals 525,600. So I'm going to enter this in my calculator, but it's going to be hard to rewrite it here. So I'm just going to write it as 1 over n to the n, okay? n in this case represents this number, and the number that I've calculated is for that value is 2.71 hmm still in the 71 cent range didn't seem to go by by much but it did increase a little bit 714 to 718 hmm but that was such a big jump this 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 value of n is much larger than that one okay and then i guess i'm gonna do one more with you guys it's just every second let's do for every second what would happen if we compound our payments every second every second means that n is equal to 31 million five hundred and thirty six thousand and again I'm just gonna substitute it as n so a equals 1 plus 1 plus 1 over n to the n and for that value I get approximately 2.71 a two eight seven seven dot 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 and look at that this is much larger than that one and they didn't see have to have grown by that much and it seems it's starting to seem to us like we're reaching a limit all right and that limit has a very special name and if you would like to know more I'm gonna make an alternate video about it but you don't need to know right uh, um, know very much just know that that value is called e if you take your calculator out right now and I want you to look for the for an, a button or some expression that has e to the some power and most, most most of your calculators want you to type e to the first if you do that I'm gonna do that on my calculator and I get this value here 2.718281828468 and I want you to see they're very they're very close this this number is approaching that number all right so as you can see, when we make the values of n larger and larger, we can say as n, as the value of n goes to infinity, a is, the value of a is going to go to e. As the value of n goes to infinity, as they get larger and larger, our value of a is going to approach this special number e, and that seems that's the limit to how much money we can make, even if we compound every nanosecond. Or which is really known as um, compounded continuously and that's all right to summarize I just wanted to point out that this is one of the most special numbers in mathematics especially in courses like calculus and I hope you thought this was really cool a really cool exploration involving money and it seems like we were gonna make a lot of money until we reached that limit so that's one of my favorite lessons to show you and I hope you enjoyed it